Welcome, I'm Rich from Trapping Inc. TV. I've just spent the last couple days working with the, the new Range Road sawmill, the 5029 model, and this is my review. I've got uh, a lot of uh, time put into it. I've slabbed some nice logs. I've slabbed both poplar and, and some good birch that I've got here, left over from this winter's uh, uh, firewood haul. Uh, first off, let's talk about, about the unit, what, what all comes, and uh, then we'll get into the performance part. We'll see the sawdust fly. I guess the first thing I want to talk about is why is it sitting on a trailer? Uh, a sawmill needs to have, you know, your bed has to be flat, has to be without bumps in that in it so that this rolls back and forth so easily. Uh, to me, my, my 20 foot trailer was just a natural and I know that Range Road is actually starting to produce these on trailers, just because it's very portable, right? The whole idea behind this mill is you can take it anywhere, you can do your sawn right there and uh, produce w whatever you want and then move on. So I put it on my 20 foot trailer, made it really easy to, to set up. Uh, basically, you gotta worry that you don't have any ups and downs, humps in your, in your uh, track and you gotta make sure that, it, that the two pieces are in, in line so that it doesn't kink or, or, or uh, interfere with the rolling. Other than that, you have uh, all these adjustable feet here, and they they give you about about three and a half inches of uh, of adjustment. So you could have that much difference between between feet and still end up being able to level. It's a it's a nice uh, amount of adjustment. I didn't need very much in here because I not only took in and and uh, made sure that it was perfectly straight. I also leveled it from side to side. I don't know whether that's a consideration or not. You've got a very stiff frame here, like this on the uh, 29 incher has a four post frame, okay? So it's very, very stiff and, and uh, it doesn't flex a lot. The actual log frame itself, or the, uh, the cutting track, uh, it comes standard with, uh, with the two, two pieces here. That'll allow you to cut a log up to 10 foot four inches in length. You, however, can add on as many as you want. And uh, I think the 2.7 meters uh, uh, per per length or whatever, so you can hit 16, 20, well, however however long you want. There is a limit. I mean, on, unless you're in trees that don't grow in Alberta, because <laughs> I'd have a hard time getting a, a 16 footer that that I could actually cut a nice straight log out of. Anyway, you can. It is expandable to whatever length you want. Come standard with the two. So up on the deck here, we have uh, pockets for our our stops. And this is what your log rolls against, hold, holds in place. Uh, they are adjustable. You have this right here is a stop protector. So as you roll forward, if this stop is sticking up, it's gonna hit it. And that way you're not gonna hit it with your blade. Do damage to your blade. So there's, it also comes with very long ones for very large logs. Uh, this has the ability to, to raise up to, to a great height, but I, I've been using mostly on these little Alberta logs, mostly the, the two short ones on the ends. This is completely adjustable, completely movable. You can do it every way you want. And it simply just screws into the side of the log and pulls it against your, your log dogs. The track is, you can see is a nice beefy quarter inch thick and you've got four rollers, one on each corner of this for rolling back and forth. And it rolls, rolls very easily, not, not, not a lot of work involved. This is, is a bandsaw. 
Runs an inch and a quarter Lennox uh, blade, and you can get it in either seven degree or 10 degree. Uh, really, really simple. Uh, it uh, has a, a water system here. It comes from your, your tank up here. It's adjustable at, at this spot here. Drips down on your blade, and it's just for cooling. Some people think it's for lubrication. It's mostly it's for cooling. Uh, everything is adjustable here. As far as our uh, tension, it's adjustable here. You loosen, it, loosen the bolt at the back and just tighten this up and, and uh, make sure that you keep your alignment. There's another uh, bolt here for keeping alignment so this, this wheel runs true, right? The blade runs at 3150 RPM, so it goes pretty good. It's driven by a, a uh, 13 and a half horse Briggs and Stratton, and I've done, I ran a whole day of cutting on a single tank of fuel, so pretty impressed that way. Last thing here on the, the blade is it is controlled and held in place by blocks on both sides, and it also has a support behind it, a, a wheel. Um, a bearing wheel that uh, so as the pushbacks on it, it can't uh, cause it to twist or warp. This is a centrifugal clutch, which means that you start under no load. Nothing is turning uh, here in the front end until you uh, up the RPM, then the centrifugal clutch engages and you start doing your work. Uh, it's really good for cold weather starts and it's good for, for uh, you know, low wear and tear because you, you spend a lot of time just idling when you're, when you're busy moving stuff around. Okay, 13 and a half horse Briggs motor back here. All your controls, your, uh, it's an electric start, battery mounted there. Here's your throttle control. Now this is your push bar. And so when you go to cut, you take and push it all the way forward. It uh, engages your centrifugal clutch and she starts to cut. Really simple. Really nice measurement uh, system here. It's, it's done by wheels. So this is a quick release, quarter turn, and you can adjust whatever you want. Just take and lock it again and you have further locking adjustments right here so that you don't get any, any ripple or, or, or bubbling going on. Here we got our uh, scale here and a lot of people get confused with this. This at the bottom here where that's at does not mean that's at the bottom of, of its cut. All this is is a reference so that if I'm, if, uh, I'm making a cut and, it, and it's right here is my, my good cut. I want two inches from there. Well, I'm just going to go up two inches. It's, a, it, it's that simple, right? Actually, that, that would be going down. Uh, how uh, good does this cut? Well, it can cut up to six and a half inches thick. And here's how thin it can cut. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? How, 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 how good that is? I'm just astounded. This is a piece of a uh, piece of poplar, but I just thought I'd see how how thin I'd cut it. And man, I guess you could say it's an eighth of an inch. It's uh, she's pretty dang thin, and it's uniform. It's flat across. I mean, it's it's great. All right, um, let's throw another log up and and see what we can do here.
go, the last one. That is awesome, that is all two inch birch. Some of it is as big as 24 inches across the butt. Uh, typically, sawmills like this are used for rough sawing for, for decking on trailers or for, uh, for fencing uh, around uh, a corral, that kind of stuff. It's not, uh, not as often applied for, for sawing a hardwood, but you know me, I gotta push it to the, to the limit. I sawed pine and poplar and birch. And uh, you can see how much birch we, we saw it here. It was just phenomenal, the, the amount that, that got cut up. This was left over from stuff that I'd got delivered last winter for, for firewood, and this was too big to go through the processor. We managed to use up uh, one blade. Well, not use up, it just needs to be sharpened. They're all resharpenable, and Range Road has a, a sharpening tool for it. But all the same, look at this. Look at how good that, 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 that cuts, how uniform that is, how flat it is. That's maybe an eighth of an inch thick. That is just absolutely remarkable. And it went the, the whole length like that. Uh, I can't say enough about it. It is a typical Range Road product. It's dependable, it's affordable, it's simple to work on, and it will do the job for you day in and day out. Sandy wants to know what I'm do, gonna do with all this birch, but she's gonna have to wait to find out.